Hello folks. Today in the workshop we have a tree that is native to North America. Uh, it's a chalk bark maple. We've been working on this tree for approximately seven years now. Um, I started it out in the ground where I made some initial cuts that you can see here. I made an initial cut here and an initial cut here. At the time I didn't really know a whole lot about the species or how it would react to uh, back budding. There were no branches on the lower portion of this tree anywhere. And what you see here is the past seven years worth of growth. Um, I cut it back and I let it recover in the ground for two years before I dug it. Um, after I collected it, it's been in this container for the last three years. It's been kind of a slow process, but I think overall I've gotten some pretty decent results with a species that I've had absolutely no um, experience with whatsoever. So now's the time for this tree to re receive its initial styling. Um, <clears throat> the internodial growth um, at first was very lar long and uh, leggy, um, but as over time of it being inside this pot here and getting into a root bound situation, it's actually shortened up the inner nodes so you, you can get really nice compact growth out of this tree. Now the buds are just getting ready to burst, so this is about the best time to do this. Also, if you notice, this is another one of the trees where it retains its last year's leaves to protect the dormant buds that are on the branches. So the first process um, with this tree today is we're going to go ahead and remove all these leaves, uh, do some branch selection. Uh, we're going to have to do some carving. We're going to have to do a transitional carve from this primary apex to this secondary apex on this, this half of the tree. And then I need to look at this over here and just determine what I'm going to do with this side of the tree. I have an, a back branch as well that I'll show you here, which is right here. Um, it needs to be reduced quite a bit as well. Um, not 100% sure exactly the style I'm going for with this tree. I'm going to kind of give myself a little artistic freedom as we go and hopefully it comes out to be something halfway decent. So we're going to go ahead and get started here. We'll come back a little bit later as we normally do. Um, I will be wiring this tree today as well. And uh, we'll see what we get. Okay. Here we are partially through the, the uh, branch selection and initial design phase of this tree. Um, <clears throat> cut, went ahead and cut the large knob off here where I'd cut it and it died back to where it decided it was going to back bud. Uh, I've done the same thing here. If you remember there was a larger branch up here. It had absolutely no branching for about six, eight inches and then it had some up here. Um, that's not going to work well for the design. I was lucky enough to have this lo lower, more compact and, and fuller growth. So this is going to take a little time to catch up with the rest of the tree, but I think overall um, keeping what I have over here and working with it versus keeping the larger piece is going to make a better tree in the long run. Um, this tree, in my opinion, must be long to the uh, sugar maple family. It's got, a, it's got a leaf that's very similar to the sugar maple, but it also saps and bleeds profusely. Uh, we just had rain a couple days ago down here, so the, the trees had a two or three day period where it's rained quite a bit and it's got a lot of water in its root system and in the soil, so I think I'll be okay doing this now. Um, I wanted to wait as late in the season as I could, and I mean, these the buds on this tree are literally three, four days from now, they'll start opening up. So I wanted to make sure I timed it just as just is, is close as I could. Uh, what you're looking at now is the projected from the tree. Um, obviously it's going to be in the informal upright style. Uh, next thing we're going to do is we're going to, I got to figure out what I want to do with this back branch here, if I'm going to keep the back branch of the tree or not. And then um, start doing some carving in some areas that I need to do some carving in. I'm going to try to go ahead and apply some wound sealing as quickly as possible to keep this thing from bleeding as much as it, it is. And um, we will uh, revisit this tree in a little bit. And uh, by then I should have everything done as far as carving and some of the wire applied. And uh, we'll go from there. But I just kind of wanted to show you in this phase of the design where we were, the projected front of the tree. 
Um, there was a large branch down low right here on the tree. You probably can't see at the moment. I'm going to end up turning this into a euro. Um, it's going to be part of. It. It's going to be a feature in the tree. Uh, there's not really much else I can do with it. And if I turn it around to the back side, where I thought would be a good front. Matter of fact, I even marked it as a potential front in the soil here. It, it looks good. It's got decent transitions, but you're going to have a large wound here. And the tree actually leans away from you from this angle. I'd have to do a drastic change in planting angle for this tree to be, for to utilize this as the front of the tree. It's just not going to work out that way. So I've made my decision and this is going to be the front of the tree. So uh, let me go ahead and get started with the carving and uh, do a little bit of wiring on it and we'll be back shortly. Alright, here we have the finished tree for now. Um, fortunately my die grinder decided it wanted to uh, quit on me halfway through the styling of this tree. So I had to uh, use just hand carving tools to carve the remainder of it. I'm going to go get another die grinder and uh, finish this euro this season. It doesn't have to be done right away. Um, it's already been, you know, the die back is already where it's going to be and I can go ahead and grind into this area. Um, just got to be careful around the edges where the live veining is still um, just to keep it from wanting to sap out a whole lot. Um, We'll do a quick 360 of this tree. I may shorten this top just a little bit more. Uh, a really small bud right here, but not 100% sure just yet. So we'll leave it and let everything sprout out and see what's happy and what's not. And we'll work with what we have uh, this spring. I'll be fertilizing this one just like I do all the rest. Uh, getting some decent water on it. Uh, working on ramification on the majority of these branches. And uh, we'll go from there. I'm going to do a quick 360 for you so you can... Uh, see where we are now versus where we started and uh, we'll go from there. I also want to point out one quick thing on this species of tree. The, uh, the growth between the buds, the internodial distance, is pretty long in, in the scope of what bonsai that you typically look for are. Um, so what I've done on every one of the branches, I went ahead and clipped the very tip growing bud. Um, hopefully that will cause some back budding down on the branching further back towards the tree so I can push all the growth in tighter towards the tree and then I can work on you know continually doing that throughout this tree's progression which will hopefully gain me quicker in, or shorter I'm sorry internodial distances which is the distance between one set of buds and then you have a growing shoot and there's another set of buds the distance in between those is what I'm speaking of it's relatively long on this species of tree so I'm trying some different methods to get that space in between the buds, buds shorter. Um, that way I can form a more compact branch structure and a more compact tree um, and still maintain a decent design outline. So that's where we are on this tree and we'll revisit this one uh, sometime this summer just to see where we are in progression. Another quick point about chalk bark maple which is the common name of this tree. Uh, the reason they call it chalk bark maple is the bark on the tree will get these white patches on it. It looks chalky, almost like somebody has scribbled, scribbled on it with chalk. And that's where the common name chalk bark maple came from. Um, the scientific name or the Latin name of this is Acer leucodermis. So, that's where we are on this one. Thanks for watching.